Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit, live in Washington, D.C., in-person event, and also digital, hybrid. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here with Kim Majerus, who's the Vice President of U.S. Education, State, and Local Government. Kim, great to see you again. Great to see you as well. We're in person since 2019. I know. First time. <laughs> it's exciting to finally see people and actually People reconnect. are doing deals. We've got an expo floor. Yes. It's happening. It's Keynotes. A lot of excitement. So what a, what a ride, I got to say, in the past two years since the pandemic, um, we've been covering a lot of public sector action, mainly because it's just been such a growth area. It's been really, um, actually, kind of interesting to see how old, antiquated, <laughs> slow-moving uh, parts of the public sector had to literally transform overnight. Overnight. State and local government and education, which is your areas. Absolutely. Interesting, and you know, video conferencing, the internet, didn't really break, it worked. But still, that is a mindset change. What's, what's your, this remote learning? What was your observation takeaway? You know, um, I take a look at all the K through 12s and higher ed and how quickly they had to shift literally overnight. Um, it was amazing to see how quickly these educators really shift their focus to continue education. We had our Imagine Education event on Monday. It was great to have so many leaders across uh, the institutions come and join us and share their best practices. Whether it was transforming um, the way they address their students with companies like Zoom and engaging them, or even how they were supporting their, their teachers, their administrators through the pandemic. It was, it was amazing to see how quickly they moved. What innovation do you think they're most interested in? Because obviously it's, it's a cultural change. Absolutely. I mean, education, I mean, that is like highly impacted. You got parents, you got teachers, you got administrations, yeah. the community at large. They're all interested in this. It's all a public display. Well, what were they most interested in? The you know, I think parents, first and foremost, <laughs> they realize the difficulty of being that teacher with their children. But um, if we take it a little bit further down the road, um, I think the important part is learning is customized and it's personalized. And learning is not just a, a time on a schedule that you go and sit in a class, but now the students, parents, they want it all the time. They want it readily available. But if I think about what we'll see moving forward is the data to which they were collecting and changing that student outcome, how do you in, inject support services for students who may not necessarily be going through the classes at the same level at, as other students? So using the data, personalizing the support that students need, yep. and then more importantly, inserting additional resources to help them through you it. You know it's very interesting, and I'd love to get your reaction to this, because it's, it's something that I've been thinking about, we've been talking about on theCUBE, is education, like events, is going to be change forever. It's never going to be the same. No. Um, you get a lot of hybrid, the people have been exposed to remote learning, other sources, maybe non-linear progressions. Now you have kind of a new way. Kind of interesting for cloud to be in that position because that's kind of like what cloud does. Cloud allows for new things to develop, new workflows, and you got AI and machine learning kind of right yep. there. So you kind of see the dots connecting in education. Absolutely. Because it's new, it's, it's not going to be the same. Does that favor the, the, the innovator, does it favor the AI? What's your, what's your take on all that? You know, um, I think we have to change our thought on what a student is. It's really a lifelong learner. So if mm -hmm. you take a look at our young children, they have an expectation of how to experience education very differently than what you and I would experience. So if we first take that step back and say, how do we provide the education that the individual is comfortable with? I think that's the game-changing opportunity. There are amazing ed techs. That's a part of my business that I love watching. They're innovators, they're former teachers, yeah. they're thought leaders. They're born in the cloud and they want to change the way education looks. So I, I don't think we'll ever get away from having an instructor, so to yeah. speak, but what we will have is different mechanisms in order to support those students you and know, lifelong learners. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because not to just go one more step down is that Max on stage yesterday talked about laying baseline numbers down for one of the uh, nonprofits he was supporting, um, uh, Acorn, Acorn, I think it was. Um, and that mindset of getting the data because the cloud, you see things now quickly. The yes. data's there. So if something's not working, you really can't hide, right? So no. education and state and local government, you can't hide projects or put up uh, you know, camouflage around things that aren't working. 
No. It's either working or it's not. Well, we saw that through the early stages of the pandemic where systems were failing because they couldn't support all the legacy debt that the state specifically and some education institutions yeah. had. They had to quickly look to innovate. But I, I had the opportunity to meet with several state CIOs yesterday and my yeah. first my first point to them was thank you yeah. because they really struggled, but more importantly, they saw the opportunity to innovate quicker and that's yeah. exactly what they're what we're doing. I don't know if you had the chance to see the Utah um, use case about changing from a mainframe to moving it to the cloud. It was exciting to hear yeah. about the savings, but more importantly, the innovation that they see, because you're right, it's about transparency. And I think COVID, yeah. there was, it was out there. The, the migration time. modernization trend, certainly very relevant in your area. Uh, it's probably one of the, the biggest use cases we see. Um, the other thing I'd like to get your thoughts on is workforce. The workforce, yes. that's changing too. What's Absolutely. your take on the, the workforce? Well, World Economic Forum says that 50% of our workforce must be reskilled by 2025. And when you think about that, so we have, you know, early in career coming out of college, but an entire workforce that needs to change. I think between Educate, Academy, our community colleges, and those non-for-profit organizations, you know, they see the opportunity. We just need people to harness harness what technology can do for their careers. Um, one of the things that you guys have always been part of, um, and I, since the beginning I've been covering you guys, you have a lot, you do a lot of stuff um, for people's missions. Um, you're solving problems, world problems, not yep. just for profit. Um, you're doing kind of the right thing, I would say. Um, now you got this new innovation studio. I saw the yes. news on that. What is that about? Because that looks cool. First of all, studio, is that like cameras involved? Yeah, no, well, um, <laughs> I, I think the way to look at it, so at Amazon HQ2 out here in Arlington, we will have um, a space for people to come and work with Amazon experts to solve some of those biggest challenges. Everyone has a mission, and when people are passionate about the mission, we start to use our processes and our mechanism like working backwards. So understanding what problem they're trying to solve, working back from what that issue is and then pulling it through, whether it's data, information, or new fresh ideas. Uh, we'll be hosting them and working with uh, other Amazonians who might be interested in solving And for there's it. some big names involved too in, here in DC. Georgetown's involved, I think yes. I saw, and some other groups where they, they can bring data to the table. Absolutely. So, so the way, how's it going to work? So if someone says, hey, I see a big problem in yes. society or the world, I want to solve it. So Georgetown is a great example. Social good, they're so committed to it um, in the community and globally. So they'll bring uh, their students and we'll sit down and understand what that mission is that they're trying to solve for. They've got amazing programs to help returning citizens back into the workforce. You know, they're out there to help, but it's what's that extra little nudge that we could help them bring it through and up through yeah. technology. Well, that's awesome. Looking forward to seeing that play out, open up, and we get back into the workforce. Um, maybe bring the cube there, solve some cube problems. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, do some video documentaries on that. All good, all good content. Um, on the pandemic, I got to ask you, because one of the things came up, this was clear over the past two years, and I remember we reported a lot of on it in the US and outside the United States, uh, in Canada specifically. During the pandemic, the critical services that the governments had to provide were, were on, on were, they weren't going to stop. No. So in, even though people kind of sidetrack things, they still had to get stuff going. Yep. There were some mission critical government services that were needed. You guys helped out a lot. What are some of the areas that you guys helped the governments be successful in? Well, I think it's interesting how they, you know, just like students had to quickly move to working or learning from home, workers had to work from home. Um, Amazon Connect was absolutely uh, a lifeline for many of the governments that, one, they had to support their citizens, but two, actually support their the workers, you know, they went from taking calls in a call center type environment to literally taking those calls from maybe their kitchen, you know, their kitchen uh, table or a side room. So Connect was an opportunity for them in a couple of different ways, serving the citizens, but also serving, um, you know, the workers that took care of it every day. And LAUSD, I think, was the most creative when I think about how quickly they moved. Yeah. They had to take whether it was LA County or LAUSD, both of them realized how they needed to change the support of their employees. So they stood up Connect literally overnight and offered a whole different level of support. But then two, LAUSD took it even one step further and said, you know what, we still have to provide social uh, services to our students. They yeah. then turned it into an opportunity to support students 
in English and in Spanish, literally overnight with their support. You know, I won't say I won't name names, but I actually talked to one of your customers on this point on Connect, uh, and this person was a skeptic. Ah. Okay, <laughs> they were a skeptic of the cloud, not Amazon, but the cloud. Oh, yeah, I got my ways, and we do a process. We're not going to change. Okay, he had to force the force to change. He again came out of it and was a reference. In a, on an interview, he came out and said, first of all, I'm convinced I'm never going to go back to the old yep. way. He saw the agility and he was skeptical, he was, and then he was nervous, because he had he was under a lot of pressure to deliver, sure. and uh, it was tough. And he goes, oh my God, we came out the other side. So the connect thing really did help people. Yeah, you know, and I've, I've been saying this for the last four years, it's not a question of if, it's a question yeah. of when. And I think that's the piece uh, that we all recognized during the pandemic, they had to move quick. And it was great to see them take take the challenge and actually execute on it. So on modernization, obviously migration is a big theme, seeing migration and modernization. The applications are being developed faster than ever before. Um, DevOps is being revolutionized, it's being much more agile. Absolutely. People are realizing that the speed to build apps with the data, with some of the, the new cloud high level services, that things are happening fast. And there are traditional blockers now that are becoming those old <laughs> security group or the IT group. Yep. So you have these areas that are slower. The pace car now is the app DevOps developer. Absolutely, that and data sharing. Data sharing, so this now is starting to change the internal dynamics, the power dynamics of entities. So as organizations modernize, how do you talk to the folks out there then and say, hey, you know, there's a way to do this, we all can get along, harmony, more harmonious uh, architecture or organizational uh, structures. What are some of the best practices? Well, I think it's important to know it's a cultural shift. As you point out, you know, people are in their individual organizations feeling that they're supporting their customer base. So we really work very closely with them to understand it's not just about technology, it's about the business process change and the cultural shift. You have to, I mean, there's that always that, that tension is like, is this going to impact my job for the individual? Mm -hmm. And what, what we're hearing them say, this is not about you're getting less work, you're getting more work and we're shifting. So bringing, those, bringing any state worker, or even an educator, along the journey to say, your job is not over, your job, job is literally just begun. It's the cultural shift that has played the biggest role. So the folks watching right now that might say, you know, I got to move faster. What would you say to those people out there? Know what, the, know what good looks like first. It, you know, I think over the past years or decades, they've just built on what they've done. The working backwards process is probably the most impactful for our, um, our civil servants and our leaders to say, how do I serve my, ser my citizen differently? How do I serve my student differently? If you start there and work backwards, the data's all there. Yeah. The question is, what are you doing with the data? Because if you're not actually taking the information and turning it into action, it's really hard. So if there's anybody out there who's like, where do I start? Work backwards. Find the person and the problem that you're working from and work it backwards. I don't know who it was, but someone told me yesterday it was 28,000 data centers out there in the government. <laughs> oh, yes. All with data in it. So get it all in one spot. One spot and, and make it actionable. Awesome. Kim, great to see you. What's new, with, what's the highlight for the event for you? Obviously face-to-face, -face, cool, but you're seeing customers. What's the highlight? You know, I think it's actually just seeing the customers. <laughs> um, I've had uh, all my customers and many of my team virtually in my house for the last 18 months, yeah. so it's good to walk the floor, see the customers, and yeah. more importantly, partner with the partners that have helped our customers collectively. It, it's fun to see people and say, hey, good to see you, <laughs> and, and it's been a year and a half. It's yes. been like, oh my God, yes. so it's well, refreshing. It's nice to see you without a face mask, <laughs> and I think that's the other piece I think we're all anxious to move past. Cool. Kim. Kim, thanks for coming on. Kim Thank is your you. Vice President of U.S. Education, State, and Local Government here at AWS, really making a difference. Now that with the cloud, you can't hide, the data's there, the value's there, see who can transform, otherwise they'll be on the sidelines. So Mr. Cube coverage, AWS Public Sector Summit, live in Washington, D.C., be right back. <laughs>